да? Ну такое ощущение, что да, смотри, как вот смотри, какая часть вынесла, видишь, прям вырвала ее на опу. Там двигатель. А Юмини как вытек, да? С такими слитками лежит. Ага. Контейнеры. Их просто развернула. И, и перекосила. Я говорю, двигатель выкинула. Это, это химарь прилетел. То есть ее, скорее всего, ну, FPV-шкой остановили, а химарь добил. Номер такой. Да я вижу, вижу, вижу. Ну это вообще вот вверх прилетело а прям мощно. Его может подвинули просто эту машину. Ну, скорее всего, ее с дороги вот. убрали. Ну, да. Это да, это, блядь, это не FPV. Однозначно не FPV, он колесом стоит прям. Это как раз снимает, как у нас. Ее добил. Ну и потом, скорее всего, уже допинали ее потом еще и в пивишками, видишь, потом. Чтоб уже до конца. Да. Химарь присутствует, вон как с той стороны, да. ты прав, да. по левому борту ей прилетела. Seoul is considering launching a missile strike on North Korean servicemen who were transferred to Russian territory to participate in combat operations against the Ukrainian armed forces. This was reported by the South Korean publication Daily NK. The publication contains screenshots of correspondence between ruling party Parliamentary Defense Committee member Han Ki-ho and South Korean National Security Directorate Chief Shin Won-sik. If we can reach an agreement with Ukraine, it would be good to bomb and launch missile strikes on units of the puppet North Korean army in order to inflict losses on them and then feed these losses to the DPRK in a psychological war, suggests Han Ki-ho. Yeah, we'll look into it. I already held an emergency meeting today to develop measures. Shin Won-sik answers. In addition, a member of the Parliamentary Defense Committee proposed that the head of the National Security Department send liaison officers to Ukraine. And so it will be done. The representative of the presidential administration responded. Let us recall that earlier, the South Korean intelligence service reported that several thousand North Korean troops had allegedly been transferred to the territory of the Russian Federation who are stationed at military bases in Vladivostok, Usurisk, Khabarovsk and Blagoveshchensk. In return, the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine stated that North Korean troops had already been transferred to the Kursk and Saratov regions. It is worth noting that the publication by the South Korean publication of screenshots of telephone correspondence between a high-ranking deputy and an employee of the presidential administration of South Korea, in fact, is the basis for a diplomatic scandal. After all, officials are discussing the issue of bombing Russian territory. Let us add that there has been no official reaction from Moscow to this yet. The US Department of Defense estimates that 10,000 North Korean soldiers have been sent to Russia to train and fight against Ukraine in the next few weeks. This number of soldiers from the DPRK is much higher than previously expected and raises fears that the war in Ukraine could expand as a result of Pyongyang's military intervention. This was stated by Pentagon spokeswoman Sabrina Singh at a briefing. According to Sabrina Singh, some of the 10,000 North Korean troops stationed in eastern Russia moved closer to the Ukrainian border. Last week, the US department predicted not 10,000 but 3,000 military from the DPRK. Some of these soldiers have already moved closer to Ukraine and we are increasingly concerned that Russia intends to use these soldiers in combat or to support combat operations against Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region of Russia near the border with Ukraine. Singh told reporters. A Russian occupier shot his commander in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation, partially occupied by the Ukrainian military. This was reported by the Telegram channel Spies Dossier. On October the 25th, 2024, in the area of the village of Kremlyanoye, Kursk region, Captain Dmitry Borisovich Slepnev Deputy Commander of the 2nd Motorized Rifle Battalion of the 810th Separate Marine was killed. The Telegram channel reported, During a service meeting at an observation post, the captain got into a verbal conflict with Private Alexander Ryabov. The latter shot Slepnev with three shots to the head. 
from an AK-74. The Telegram channel Spies Dossier writes that in the Zaporizhia region, a Russian occupier shot 10 sleeping fellow soldiers. His name is Maxim Fedorchenko. On the night of October the 26th, 2024, in the area of the settlement of Novopokrivka, Zaporizhia region, Fedorchenko shot 10 sleeping servicemen of his unit and escaped in the direction of the settlement of Polohi. The Telegram channel reported, the search for the fugitive soldier continues. Recall earlier Russian soldiers were tried for murder in Russian-occupied Ukraine, more than the total number of murders committed by veterans across all of Russia's regions combined. Other violent crimes that soldiers were charged with include manslaughter, violation of firearm handling rules, and assault. Manslaughter cases are often concealed by reducing the charges to violation of firearm handling rules, a lighter criminal offense. Especially veterans continue to commit acts of violence upon returning home and revealed that judges often commute their sentences and impose fines, while sending ordinary Russians to prison for similar offenses. Soldiers are hardly ever punished for drinking, unless they commit a serious crime like murder, as in civilian life. Killings on the battlefield often arise from personal conflicts and disputes. Court experts have identified some defendants as alcoholics, drug addicts, and people suffering from mental illnesses such as post-traumatic stress disorder. Personal conflicts don't always result in murder, of course. Soldiers often try to scare or teach their comrades a lesson by aiming at their arms and legs or stabbing them. Regular attacks on targets in Russia affect the general mood of Russians. However, one should not hope that the Russian population will complain about something flying at them and express dissatisfaction with the policies of Vladimir Putin. Valery Glochok, head of the Veza Public Analysis Center of Ukraine, told Channel 24 about this. He added that the Russians will not go against the dictator solely because of the Ukrainian UAV attacks. Until the West, changes its policy towards Russia and the OPEC countries that determine the level of oil prices, then it is too early to talk about the transformation of processes in the territory of the aggressor country, noted the head of the Veza Public Analysis Center. For riots to occur in Russia, a number of other factors must form that will stimulate the Russian population to express their discontent and ultimately raise riots. In particular, these are economic factors, of course. The attacks on Russia highlights this problem. International pressure and perhaps most importantly, the limitation of Russia's ability to earn money on international markets. After all, as long as Russia trades oil and receives billions in revenue from the budget, it will be able to maintain its fortune, said Klochok. The international factor is of key importance in the indignation of the Russian population. Today, despite the fact that the Russian economy is overheated, it still gives opportunities for a large number of the population to receive high incomes. Of course, the poverty level in Russia is extremely high, more than 60%. However, even social tension and poverty in the long term are unlikely to create favorable conditions for Russian riots to arise and reach a scale where Russians will go and demolish the Kremlin noted Klochok. Now in Russia, completely different processes are taking place. This is rather a provocation of the Russian elites to share power, but politicians in Russia are still capable of reaching agreements, sharing money and ensuring the stability of the regime that serves a large number of the population. They will be a restraining factor for Russians who live in poverty and see these explosions. By the way, according to Ukrainian intelligence, despite the problem that Russians are facing, they are not ready to rebel against Vladimir Putin.